Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last session of Thrive. And with anything that you do last, right, it's the most important one. right? I'm just trying to uh, get you guys started. So how to build a budget, but more importantly, how to stick to it. right? I, but before we start this, right, how many people feel that when you say budgeting, right, exactly the same reaction I used to have, even after being brought up in a Gujarati household, where I had to write checks and do accounting. But the interesting part is that I, you know, all of us have bills and they genuinely multiply, right? It's exactly like COVID. And bills in today's times truly got out of context, right? But most sometimes you have to do your math and you realize you might not be able to afford some, perhaps most of the things that we end up doing. And this happens to me daily. Even after working in finance, being in a Gujarati household, being a Banya myself, I still fall for the trap. So always be wary of the cat. But unfortunately, most of us have this feeling when we over exceed our budget, right? The feeling that we get, it's 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 a context that there is no, it's like literally a squirrel saying, what the hell in life? But when you stay in your budget, right? For so some of you all might have this reference, but this is exactly how I feel when I'm staying budget or when anybody else tells me that they stayed in their budget. But most importantly, a day before our paycheck, right? All of us feel like that crosses over to the across the wall and we're all alone and waiting for something to change so that we can go back to the, the highlands around the same and leave the snow behind, right? So let's start with the theme that most of our nation talks about today, right? Bring Atman Hilbar. Right? And when we think about Atman Hilbar, I think some of you all might have this reference uh, from this movie DLJ, but the fact that, you know, can we, you know, catch the train? Because it's really hard to catch Shah Rukh Khan here, right? But at the same time, all of us want like the, you know, the, the same dream, right? Roti Kapada Makan, but hopefully a fancy one. Around, we want all the latest iPhones and all gadgets around the same. And most importantly, all of us want crazy paisa, right? Uh, there's no question and I, I don't think we should hide from it. I love this generation that does not care that I truly want it because most of our friends while growing up, we actually detested. No, no, we all behave uh, and, you know, sorry, I'm going to use, we were all outside the gates of jail. I'm just taking a lighter note around this. End. But the fact that we all came from an era that thought making money and being capitalist was absolutely wrong. But in reality, you know, we have to balance things. And it's great that now the audience of most young investor people can say, Mirko chahiye. And I think this is the biggest change that's going to happen. But it's not all of it. Just because you want it does not mean that you get it, right? As some of us this thing. So what to do become Atma Nirva, right? These are my three simple steps and might apply to a few, might not apply to a few, but just a way to think, right? We have to become independent from parents. Some, some of y'all who were working went back home in the COVID time, realized that parents literally rule our lives, right? And the most 40 year olds I know still have their parents managing their money. How do we change that? The only way is that you have to manage your money. Second, don't let the government define how much money. Yes, they will charge for taxes, but learn how to reduce your taxes in the legal way. But most of us, unfortunately, I think they should first have a class of income tax, how to save money by the government before they actually start giving you an income. Unfortunately, it does not happen, right? But the perhaps the most important, the most immediate thing that we can do is manage our expenses and not wait for the bonus. That will define our nature around the same, right? So the question is, Goran, where do we get started, right? Like, this is great. I have to become independent. I've heard this all my life. Everybody tells me this, but where do I get started, right? We have to understand one thing, that gratification is real. And all of us are seeking, right? Technically, me being on stage today with you all through Grow is my gratification. But hopefully, I'm not stealing from my future, right? Me spending this time is me learning from each of you, and hopefully, you're learning. But this cannot apply to all our spendings. We have to just rationalize it, right? And, and take that one, you know, I normally say that one night sleep before you buy anything. So hopefully you'll think about whatever you want to buy. Just buy it the next day. 
just do that simple rule and if you become a gujarati or a banya then you will just delay it by the next day and the next day and and the good part is you will delay it around the same but think of your current saving as your future earning right and if you and this is a very important mindset right every penny you save today can become your future earning and it's a habit that we have to figure a way to inculcate and it is just understanding our relationship with our money right so don't chase status right and in reality we all want to chase right we all want to take the best selfies that go online we want our friends to be slightly jealous and let's be let's be true that most of them do it to us so we why should we do it back to them when we have the slightest opportunity around us but choose wealth in the long term versus status because if in the end wealth will matter status might not around the same right i think you've heard this term but it's so true and in my life every time i think about it status has driven me to do things and not wealth and that's been perhaps my major learning that at least i have learned over the years right the only way and we hear this word compounding time and time again but there is two simple recipes to it one we have to build a habit of saving second we have to be patient and if you and it only works in a combination of the two just because you have a habit to save does not mean that you will become you will make the advantage of compounding right you have to keep that money invested for the long term and sometimes i say that only invest the money that you do not want to see it is the money that you do not ever need to see or would like to see on the same right it simply is said that, that the day you plant your seed is not going to become the fruit right you have to give it time but once you do it becomes an endless source of this thing so compounding is pretty much patience and habit but before we think about money let's start thinking about people around us where we work the cities or the homes that we live in we have to think everything from a holistic perspective and money cannot grow if your relationship with other people but more importantly your relationship with yourself doesn't grow over time around that so i hope all of you all will figure and understand for yourself for money to work hopefully this gives you a good context on to why we are here today right right and the step one for all of this to happen right first step for any change is to build a budget and again i'm sure you're feeling like that lady like why budget like what is the point of it I, like my i hate accountants i hate my friends who are doing ca or other things but budgets is for the nerds or it's for the mathematical nerds it is not true budget has to be real for everybody that is the simplest way right a budget is nothing but a record of where your money is coming in and where your money is going out right from your pocket or your from household right we all love to debate about the government budget and think about what all they could have done why not just ask ourselves and maybe the our roommates or our family members or our parents or whoever we are spending our time seeing what is our ghar ghar ka kharch and that can define most of things that we think about budgeting and other things are not so if you think of budget in the most simplest way it's balancing your income ki aapki amdani right where are you going to get your where all do you get your money from and where all do you have to spend from right so your basically this is to get you on your feet right budgeting nothing more than a simple activity of the same unfortunately people think budgeting means ki maine 15 rupees ka ice cream khaya matlab 15 rupees ki toffee li 45 rupees ka natural mein ice cream khaya whatever that might be is not to write the pennies in the pound it's great if you want to do it it's just tedious and you will not continue it like i it's very hard for me to stay on like even write my budget the way i have hacked this is that what i do is 5 minutes at the end of the month it's literally 5 minutes i write mota mota where all i'm spending and we'll get into slight amounts of where all we do what we do okay so simply establish an income now what is an income mean income could be from multiple sources so if you are pre college with any one of your it's the pocket money that you get right unfortunately i wish my pocket money it uh, grew every year and stayed consistent but it's not the case right so any form of income that you're getting right so could be from income from salary in some part that typically remains small early on in your career because you don't have a portfolio or a large sum it could also be let's say your parents had uh, you know on your name created a rental property that you are trying to take so there's an income from the rent that you make 
So any form of money that's coming into your account, right? But don't count income as friends sending you money, right? That's not the same because hopefully if your friend is sending you money, it is for something that you might have spent already or it's something that you have to return and, and ideally should, right? After you've done that, one needs to define what are one's need and what are the wants, right? What are the basics that one need and what are the basics that one wants, right? And I normally hear a lot of questions saying, Gorang, is, is alcohol a need? Is smoking a need? I think all of us are smart enough to figure this out, right? I think if you want to add, and I consciously didn't put it, put need, wants, and you know, fun money, right? Or, or sin money, or whichever way you want to classify it. Then define essential and non-essential khacha, right? Everything, even in your needs, there are some essential, mostly it's essential, very, very few would be non-essential. In your wants, most of it could be non-essential, but it's good to have. I, right? I'm not saying having wants is bad, owning, trying, wanting to own a, the best laptop or the best phone or whatever is there's nothing wrong with it. But plan for it, save for it, and not go beyond your means. Right? It's pretty much it's a framework to keep you within the thing and not get it outside the circle. Right? Calculate your weekly budget. If you can't do it, do it monthly. It's okay. Now, now I do monthly and it's more than enough because I approximately know where I'm end up spending but i also make many mistakes so please make mistake in budgeting no one gets it right in one go or in one say so please don't don't be very harsh at yourself right so what are your needs your food housing medicine hygiene products today have become necessary right uh, utilities are your phone bills or education and so on and so forth your wants have suddenly you know from pvr it's moved to netflix right vacations are not happening unfortunately for some of those who are going to goa a different your malls have become an Amazon or the Flipkart. Your restaurant has become a Swiggy and Zomato or around the same, right? So think about where you spend and it's always good, right? We subconsciously don't realize how much we spend on these online platforms. I'm not saying don't spend on them. It's a necessity. I also do it. Everyone will have to do it. But the fact that you keep some check and balances around the same for it. I can guarantee you on this, right? If Zomato or Swiggy starts telling you how much you spend on their platform, you will re truly reduce it because you realize the amount of money that you end up spending on each other. Creating a personal budget is like tracking your expenses, figuring out the amount you're spending, what you do with your how to spend, and what are you spending this is not necessary. Simple, right? I'm going to repeat it. Track your expenses, just mota mota hisa. Figure out the amount you're spending, what do you have to spend, and what are you spending that is not necessary. And I'm not saying judge yourself, be very harsh at yourself. Not necessary does not mean that you don't have to do it tomorrow, right? It's something that you might not need to continue to spend, even if you have, right? We all love to ridicule ourselves in the past, but feel very elevated in the future. Both are not right to do around the same. Two types of expenses, essential, like you're saying, have to have in order to live right today. Think about it. Internet is have to have. You cannot survive without a internet, a phone, a, a telco expense, um, you know, a good piece of meal. Right? But non-essentials are, do we need to spend on extra Amazon things that is just available? Instagram shopping, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying, do you really need that product is the question that you have to ask yourself, right? Now, between essential, so essential, it, there has to be fixed expenses, right? So for rent, you have to make those, right? Insurance is something that you have to pay, right? We like it or not, but the government ensures that auto, we have to pay, otherwise the cops catch us. The Any car payments that you have taken a loan for, taxes or student loan that you have, right? We can all debate till donkeys come home, but these things we have to do if you have taken them and this thing. The variable part is car maintenance, gas, food, electricity, phone. I'm not saying don't travel, don't repair your car, don't have electricity, but think about when you need it and why you need it and how much. Always balance it. Right? Don't become the freak that has to ensure that the car is completely spick and span. Right? It doesn't need to be if it's a few scratches here or there. I just got one this morning, so I'm really, really bad about it. But non-essential expenses, right? Clothing. And I really, you know, put a star there, right, for you guys. Because clothing, you obviously need clothes. Like, I'm not going to be doing this without wearing clothes, but how many is good enough and all of it. And we end up spending a lot, right? I, you know, not calling out Mintra, but Mintra really ensures that we spend. And the whole ecosystem is designed to do that. 
books right today you can find alternate methods i find most of my books on pdf and that's my gujarati way to do things around the same right movies or video games and other things that you possibly might not need right just an example leaving housing prescriptions internet these things that you know possibly so expenses are many right you multiply right medical bills you can't do is gym membership wrong i actually got con but in my last gym membership but that's not the point if you use your gym membership and that's what matters to it but don't make it a guilty pleasure which is what i think every good street as it i'm sorry for the community fashing but yeah. so in balancing your income and expenses is essential yes that can you know figure out end of the month and treat yourself even the smallest bit you have to feel great in the smallest possible or the largest possible way if you do well and don't be so harsh if you miss it by a few percentage there the idea is not to get to the the thing the idea is to inculcate the habit even if it takes months at end right it took me perhaps 2 to 3 years to even understand this concept about it right and i'm not great at it i also miss my expenses uh income and expenses balances and please it will happen to you right what happens if expenses over exceed income right right you have to start thinking of why do you need to buy and now you really need to make some cuts around this so i have this rule of 10% find 10% of ways of your amount to get cut it's very hard to do more than that but if you can great but there are some tools right pay yourself first what it means is that you don't take that money and go and spend it pay yourself first means that save for yourself in the future automatically right ensure that the money disappears before you can even try to catch hold of it and it happens to the best of us right take advantage of every government scheme or employment scheme that is there to offer in the most rational way around the same right now if you don't pay yourself first you may never pay yourself at all right just think of it right you have to find ways because it's so hard to consciously take out money it's best if money disappears and then you don't go check it and let it be invested for the long term around the same tech doesn't disappear right think of it right if a, your bank account was a whole city literally you would be a small apartment but a, but your loans are much larger than your bank right student loans can apply to personal loans the new avatar is buy now pay later and everybody thinks this is a great community service technically it's not or or 0% emi or any form i think the only loan that i appreciate and i like is a home loan if you've decided where you want to live for the for a fairly long time and you are building the asset for the long term around the same all other loan including credit cards can be left aside for a later date around this when it comes to expenses expect the unexpected in reality we assume that 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 the amount of money that save will be so less but what happens is we end up spending much spending much much more and we have to be really really careful about the same spending mindlessly adds up right what you think you bought on amazon versus what you actually used are literally dimensionally of opposite hence buy only if you think and i'm not targeting amazon or any platform just suggesting with an example here right and don't forget a quick and easy way to save little money is to toss it literally big, create a piggy bank right in your cupboard if you want to put notes in it but that really adds up and it's not that you have a piggy bank then you break it and then you use it for something just inculcate the smallest habit it and it's just a habit formation that it should be naturally that all my coins need to go in a box that i don't touch it's not that you that's going to make you a multi millionaire or any format but you build the habits subconsciously right why do budgets fail they budget fail for three reasons negative attitude sometimes we all have it i true face this problem most of the time lack of motivation because it's really hard to motivate ourselves and we set unrealistic expectations by just me telling you these three things tomorrow morning they will not change i go through these three things all the time so when i go through them take a deep breath and move forward right it happens financial goals are necessary they are necessary for vacations colleges or any form of upgradation of skill new car down payment for a house paying off your credit card debts hopefully you will not get into the cycle ever but let's get real now right i think we've had too much gyan around the same 
in reality we all want to skip the line right why should we wait and that's i think what is great is the like my generation or previously we never wanted to skip the line because we were trained subconsciously to think to stick to the line right and i know that some of you must be laughing because in india no one stands in a line but subconsciously that existed around us now we truly want to skip it skip it but be very cautious right when you do this you can pit fall to it so be careful and don't overstep on yourself right right this is exactly what happened that i need to start saving money but one ends up burning them all at some point of time i love this slide for me this is a great way it is a reality for me right we all want a mckinsey intern internship and change the name we want the best job that pays the most so that the rest of the structure goes along but be very careful just because you want something does not happen you cannot get dejected i actually got dejected from mckinsey multiple times but i joined a company two floors under them never ended up joining them but the fact that we all have this syndrome we need to be aware of it again another thing that we have to get it's really hard to ask people if you have given money to and it's it's a very difficult conversation but please don't right? these are real things that happen it's your money politely asking somebody to give you back your own money is nothing wrong and it should be done so i'm just sharing some tidbits around how things are like what also happens that things that people like to do versus things that somebody is good at might be somewhere else but things that make money to be completely else try to make all these things come closer but sometimes be very aware that just because you like to do something and you're good at it will not create money and you have to balance this out very well around having said all of this one has to truly think about their relationship with money right how do you understand that you can stick with a budget or stick with an investment is when you understand your relationship with money and this is fairly complicated i am also truly trying to figure this question out right so let me ask a few questions and maybe perhaps you all can take a few seconds to think about it but what belief did you inherit from your parents right in money matters i inherited some uh, and some were uh, from my grandfather which got me to the habit of saving right he literally used to ask me every night uh, when he would watch his doordarshan channel and he said there's your piggy bank you haven't taken your this thing and i would then run and get my piggy bank so there was something that was taught and there were other things that a uh, lot of things that my parents didn't teach me that or their beliefs that that existed around that money that money needs to be only kept in a fixed deposit or gold these are good beliefs doesn't mean that their beliefs are wrong it worked for them or real estate investing right it worked for them in their era i'm not saying any of these investments are wrong but one needs to consider all forms of investment before committing to it right what do you remember the most from your childhood in regard to money like at least for me my memories related to money were mostly around uh, two things right when i used to see my mother to uh, vegetable shopping or when i used to get a small pocket money to uh, get uh, get i used to have a hajmola and a fusion gum right but that had a habit right it i had a habit of spending every day that's something that i remember it to be right because i got money to spend it i never got money to save for it right that was not a habit that i had in my relationship with money became something that money comes in so that it can go away so that i can buy you know candy from it right and then in school it became the dosa or the ice cream on the way out but money was always got in to spend around us how important is money to your life right and it's a very hard one to ask, answer this one we like to say that it's important and unimportant at the same time right but in reality it's truly important because we cannot go about our lives without money and we have to acknowledge that that we have to find ways to earn money perhaps more and more and this will not happen overnight it takes long time to start earning money higher than before or at a higher percentage as before but that all adds up eventually the same way we have to find ways to start not increasing our costs the same way our income goes up, right so when when this happens how do you feel right and it's a very important question to ask ask yourself when you spend money how you feel when somebody doesn't allow you to spend how you feel 
when you invest and it goes down for a temporary period how do you feel just understanding this will change the relationship perhaps that you have with it right another question to ask which do you value more money or material things now if you take a step back is money material things it is but at the same time you can't get can't do without it right money is nothing but the most most efficient way to transfer for value or exchange goods right if money didn't exist a lot of things didn't exist around it so having material things is not wrong also right our value judgment on that makes the difference around that how do you make decisions to spend money right are you spontaneous careful to not care the interesting answer is that we are all of the three at some point or another or a combination of it just being aware makes that difference around us how do you feel financially privileged or deprived and interestingly i feel i feel both at most times i'm privileged at the same time i feel i am been deprived of things and vice versa right the reason i'm asking this is that your relationship with money will define who you what you do with it right and it's a very difficult and a lot question that you have to constantly ask yourself around the same right so in that think about it there are two three phases right the child phase how you made some terrible choices based on naivety right but you're not alone right i have done it perhaps i should have i would have loved to start saving much more earlier continue that piggy bank that just disappear in my middle years around the same right so if you have to pick between the two right would you save for a rainy day or living for the moment and it's very hard one right because honestly if you ask me i want to live for the moment what is the point you have to make a balance between both of them you it's not about saying i only will save and not live my life and stay in my room and not watch netflix it will not happen right finding a balance is the most critical aspect to the same but every time somebody talks about money perhaps one of the six things will come in mind there will be a bit of fear there will be envy i'm all the time envious around people there will be shame because you might feel shame in terms of what you're doing with your money and many people can't there is anxiety right what if this disappears will i get this again will i be able to enjoy my current life or improve upon it there is a bit of sadness with money and it's a reality that we have to deal with but there is also frustration these are realities that you have to just acknowledge and move forward then there is an adult phase that basically is based on a limiting belief right we all go around the world in a in a limited belief system right in that context we have to ask the question what will your relationship with money be during our adult phase will we continue this habit of getting the little money that as children we used to get so that we can go all spend it on or we change this habit around this this will happen through knowledge understanding how money mechanics works understanding financial planning bit of self knowledge it's very hard to get there i also don't have it understanding investments and understanding what assets are also what does this understanding bring to you right it brings to you a certain amount of freedom right and it might not be a lot but this freedom truly unlocks the potential so whatever we do right my context is the one way to stick to budgeting to is to understand that we have to change our relationship with our money and if we do that you know the compounding of that is much higher than one can think of right think of the vigor that one can get are you living your your life according to a plan even if you don't have it, have a direction at least right right then one you dreamed about right you always have dreams it's good to have dreams but it's also good to work towards them at the same time right the interesting part is that we are all part of this amazing game of life right not the game as such but we're all uh, playing this and it's very important to get this vigor or get the clarity in that we have to do i leave this one simple golden rule with you guys 50 30 20 this is really help me 20% of whatever we earn have to save if we cannot save 20% let us find ways to increase our income or reduce our cost but find 20% to save this is just a theoretical formula that 50% to our needs 30 to want and 20 to saving some of you all might not have rent to pay and this is great 
then save more, but don't add from need bucket to your want bucket. Add from your need to your savings and want to your savings. And, but try to achieve minimum 20% of whatever you save. And leave you with few simple last lights. Start today, start with a plan. Start saving, investing in recurring monthly, right? That's the only way, let money pay yourself first, right? And money disappears so that you could not. This thing, create short-term and long-term financial goals, Think of budget, whichever way it happens, start budgeting in the simplest and the smallest way. Do it on Excel, do it on a piece of paper, do it wherever it helps you. But share with your family and your friends how you went about your budgeting. Discuss the ideas about investing in savings because no one is right and no one is wrong. The idea is not to learn so that we can boast and increase our status, but the idea is that we can share and learn together, right? Why save? Because habits equal compounding. And this is a vicious circle that we all should become part of. Why plan? Because freedom to live is what we all want, right? This is the true thing that we as humans we want to achieve if around the same. We all want to retire early, but the retirement only comes with a lot of effort that happens. Remember, inflation is real, especially in this next 10 years. Inflation is going to be very real because there's a lot of free money moving around. On Hopefully, you will build wealth and not rent your time, right? Rent your money to build wealth, not rent your time. Why patient? Because there is no way, at least I have come across, which is get, get rich quick scene. Yes, some people have made some money early, and that's great, but doesn't apply it to most around the same. Lastly, plan your savings, build an emergency fund, and invest in the long term, but most importantly, invest in your partners, your friends, the people you work with, the companies that you're associated with. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Please read the risk disclosure documents carefully before investing in equity shares, derivatives, mutual fund, and all other instruments traded on the stock exchanges.